Hello viewers, hello listeners, hello everyone. Thank you once again for joining me on DMAPS TV. Please don't forget to subscribe if you are coming here for the first time. If you are regular, just do the usual. Please like and comment and also share our video so that others may also see what we do here. Because what we do is we give you current affairs in real time. So yes, we have just learned that the Austrian police has opened a probe into the Zimbabwe president over the charges laid out by Susan Mutami. The police on Tuesday said they would work with international bodies to investigate the allegations against Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Munangagwa. So there has been much discussion on whether or not the president is in Australia's uh, jurisdiction and whether or not they can arrest him given the charges laid out by uh, Ms. Ms. Mutami. So this one is saying that the police will work with international bodies to investigate into the matter. So the president, who is 79, was accused of assault by a 33-year-old woman dating back to 2004 when she was just 15 years old. That is, of course, according to accounts reviewed by Susan Mutami herself. Yes, so Susan Mutami, who is currently a health services professional, walked into a police station in Brisbane on Monday and filed the uh, charges against the ZANU-PF leader. And we can name it after she went public with the allegations on Twitter. Matt Adams, who is a spokesperson with the Queensland Police Service, declined to discuss the result of, of Mutami's complaint filed at Mount Omeni Police Station three days after she went public in the allegations so in an emailed response to questions from this publication adam said that for confidentiality and privacy reasons we are unable to provide any information other than to advise queensland police we will liaise, we will liaise with and refer any inquiries to international juris, jury jurisdictions george charamba who is the official spokesman for president Munangagwa. Yes, since dismissed all these allegations as mere gossip, and he said Munangagwa himself would not be candle. So, <clears throat> as we have seen, this scandal has cast a power over Munangagwa's bid to seek re election as an PF leader at a Congress expected in October, especially given that we all know that a president. I mean, Vice President, his deputy, Bakimbo Muhadi, resigned for lesser reasons of revelations he organized to have this kind of things in his government office with married women, including the wife of an intelligent officer. We saw that after these allegations came out, Mr. Kimbo Muhadi went on and resigned as the deputy president of the country. So, Mdangagwa is described in graphic detail Monangagwa's anatomy to back up the allegations. She claimed Monangagwa is a birthmark and what what we all saw the videos by now we all know how he described how she described the president and she also revealed that she pre previously told Zimbabwe's first lady Grace Mugabe and the current Zimbabwe National Army commander Lieutenant J General David Sigauke about all this issue and she also claims local government minister july moya was present at the golden mile hotel in kwekwe when munangagwa led he to one of the rooms and did the unthinkable so we have also <coughs> sought for clarity from legal experts who are saying that an international investigation targeting a head of state could be a dead end, especially without the cooperation of local police. Politically, Munangagwa could still pay the price with his deputy, Konstantino Chwenga, rep reportedly weighing up an unprecedented challenge to a sitting ZNPF leader, the party in power since the end of colonial rule in 1980. A top Zimbabwe lawyer also explained, saying, every country is criminal laws either based on common law or they are codified meaning there is a statute which defines what constitutes a crime some crimes are domestic meaning local but local can vary from province to state to nation then there are international crimes like this one and murder and terrorism money laundering and treason which are extra extradition works on reciprocity the rape 
<coughs> extradition works on reciprocity. The next level is then to say if it's an extraditable offense and if there is no reciprocity from the country where the offense was committed, you deal with Interpol and the United Nations if the person is a political figure like this case. So this person believes they can get justice in Zimbabwe. Australia is obliged by its responsibility to citizens to pursue this as far as it can take it. But the lawyer also admitted that it would take a change of leader or government for Munangagwa to face justice, not least because the constitution says a sitting president has immunity. Australia also has frosty diplomatic relations with Zimbabwe after imposing travel and financial sanctions on the country's leader two decades ago. So in terms of a legal recourse in this part of the world, but it's a bit of a dead end, especially looking at the guy's age. But the political dynamics can change anytime. And that is what the police and prosecutors will be praying for. The lawyer added, speaking on condition they were not named. So Mutami also told police that Munangagwa, then a cabinet minister, pursued him after meeting him during an interschools athletics competition and eventually took him to Kwekwe, where this became a series of what they did together. So she was. She also claimed that at once she was... She, she was in a bro with Mrs. Munangagwa before she left for Australia in 2007, where she moved to work as a nurse. So this is just an account of what really happened. But the issue that we have now is that the police of Australia, the police in Australia, yes, began investigations. And they, was, they have said that where there is need for the international police, that is the Interpol, to come in, Interpol will come in and investigate. And so they have also feathered all questions to Interpol. And also it goes without saying that this nature of a crime would have wanted the Zimbabwe Republic Police to, to cooperate. But on this instance, everyone is saying that is not even possible, especially given how the police in Zimbabwe is so some are considering this a dead end and the hope of justice uh, of, for Susan Mutami is for probably when there is a change in government or something of that sort but for now she has overpassed she has, she has overcome that, that stage where people were saying if this indeed happened why don't you go and report the case so she has indeed reported the case and we all await for justice for to take its course knowing fully well that this might take a while